This year, on Valentine's Day, the second season of the Overwatch League starts. For thousands of people across the world, it's clear that the Overwatch League, or OWL, is something special. While esports have been around for a while, they've never done something on quite the same scale, with teams of contractually signed players from across the world playing in a season that lasts several months. Four days a week, these games are streamed to thousands upon thousands of viewers and watched live in LA by those who grab tickets. When you think back to the niche hobby video games were just a few decades ago, it's pretty impressive. And in my opinion, it represents a shift in our culture, a symbolic breaking of the social taboo surrounding this passion. Sports have been a large part of human culture for ages, and as our technology has grown, so has our consumption of sporting events. The Super Bowl is still one of the most watched events every year, and even more obscure sports still have millions of dedicated fans emotionally invested in the success of these players they've never met. However, even to gamers, the concept of esports has largely seemed like a joke for a long time, and it's been hard to hold something like a StarCraft tournament in the same regard as the World Series. And while the Overwatch League still isn't as widely known or watched as the NFL, it's the closest I think video games have gotten. The biggest obstacle facing the League, of course, is getting an audience to understand what's even going on. Even most people who don't like football can tell you the basics of how the game works, it's simply ingrained in our culture. Video games aren't, especially when you consider how quickly the esports scene itself moves from game to game. Blizzard is trying their best to bridge that gap, with commentators to help explain what the viewer is seeing on screen. When the playoffs were broadcast on ESPN, they even included short tutorials on the objective before each map. Only time will tell if these efforts will be successful. Fortunately, OWL shares a lot of DNA with these real sports leagues. A slick presentation style with replays and commentators spouting real-time statistics. But the real selling point lies beneath all the technical stuff. It isn't a deep understanding of the mechanics behind each play that create dedicated football fans, after all. It's the narrative. And in its first season alone, OWL has managed to create quite a few of those, including an underdog story. Scores upon scores of motivational films have been made about underdogs in politics, love, and, of course, sports. We all see something of ourselves in the young hopeful who seems in over their head, but sticks it out and comes out on top. And while there have been esports underdogs in the past, it's hard to recall an underdog story quite like the Shanghai Dragons. Shanghai got off to a very rough start, and in the first few weeks, everyone from the audience to the commentators made it clear that they didn't think much of the Dragons. They seemed vastly outplayed, and they were dogged by controversy due to the shady practices of their coach, U4. Despite the cloud of negativity, the Dragons came back to play every week, and one day, in a match against the Philadelphia Fusion, a spark was lit. The respawns are big for Shanghai, though, and MG is not taking a lot of damage in on this D.Va. They are scrambling, and they need to stay on the payload here. This is insanity. Primal Rage again for Fraggy. As they, they have it. it out, MG out of his mech. They're trying to push them off just so they get it. Neptuno's back on the Doomfist. Five King will, oh, it inches for it, but it's not enough. They maybe have it. Ooh, this is insane. Shanghai with the kills, though. They're coming back. They've got the respawns. And Philadelphia may not quite have enough. Dayfly coming in, he's not going to last too long. And it looks like Shanghai has held it. They will take Junkertown, and we are going to the tiebreaker. Up to this point, I was the only one in my circle of friends who watched Owl. But when the Dragons had a strong opening on this map, I begged them to watch with me, and they jumped in just in time to watch that fateful hold. And even though most of them didn't play Overwatch, the energy was electric. Even though they lost the tiebreaker, the dragons had shown that they were here to compete, and the viewers lost their minds. This pattern continued. Despite flashes of brilliance, they closed out the first stage without a single win. And yet, they had still sold more merchandise and seemed to have more supporters than any other team in the league by far. Things never really got easier for the Shanghai Dragons. After the first stage, they announced the addition of four new players to their roster. Otto, who could bring a fantastic Genji into their DPS hero pool, Sky, one of the best healers in China, Fearless, a tank known for his aggressive Reinhardt play, and Gaguri, one of the most famous players in Korea due to her incredible Zarya and D.Va. Viewers were over the moon, and the new blood all had defining moments, but there was just too much working against the dragons. Visa issues delayed the new players from getting to the States for weeks, there was a language barrier between the Chinese and Korean players, and all of the shakeups to the coaching staff and roster meant that they were basically having to start over and find their footing in a league full of teams that had had nearly half a year to form a cohesive unit. Though they came close a few times, 
Shanghai ended the first season without a single win. But the fans stayed. Week after week, people still showed up, hoping this would be the day where Shanghai took home their first win. And during the offseason, the love continued to roll in, with fan art and kind messages sent to the remaining players. There's something powerful about the ability of a sport, digital or otherwise, to unite people. And while there will always be toxic elements to any fandom, you can also get so much positivity out of the experience. After that match against the Fusion, our Discord channel gained a chat specifically for Shanghai stands, and every week we watched their games together. A few weeks later, and they had all bought the game and made arcade sessions a new routine. Those weekly games became a bonding experience, and while we play other games as well, those Overwatch sessions are the closest it's ever felt to playing on the couch with them. And when the Grand Finals were held in Brooklyn, Miles and I got tickets the moment they went on sale, and it was incredible to witness this mixture of a sporting event with a convention atmosphere, with jerseys on sale next to a group of cosplayers. Through the Overwatch League and the Shanghai Dragons, our friend group got a little more tightly knit, and those moments are going to be a part of our tapestry forever. Only three players from the first season remain on the Shanghai Dragons this year, Dia, Gigori, and Fearless. It's sad to know that we won't be seeing many of the players we rallied behind last year, but I'm eager to witness the result of the restructuring the Dragons have done in the offseason. What's so fascinating about this underdog story is that it's rare for a narrative in esports to go on for so long. Sonic Fox's side switch, Shiz vs M2K, nearly all great competitive stories take place over a day at most. But the format of the Overwatch League creates the possibility for a story on the scale of the Red Sox Yankees series in 2004. If Shanghai opens up this season with a win, that would be a phenomenal chapter in their story. One thing's for certain. When they walk onto that stage on opening night, thousands upon thousands of Dragon fans will be there to welcome them back. And so will we.